Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. I'm GM Jeff, your host, and tonight I have a very special guest, the star, well, leader, well, the guy who talks the most and convinces the other party members to get in the most trouble. I am talking about Matt Witt, who plays Rahal Oberus, and not just a random rolled 20 personality, but a close personal friend of mine, Mr. Matt Witt. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Attack of Opportunity. <laughs> yes, Matt won the voice sample when we were <laughs> getting everyone to do that that check. So, Matt, the first question that we love to ask everybody on Attack of Opportunity is, was there a defining moment when you decided that you actually were a geek, a nerd, that you discovered RPG, the pen and paper, the video game history that led to RPG pen and paper. What was it for you that started you down this road? Well, for me, I've always been a gamer, an RPG gamer particularly, but um, for pen and paper, what really got me started on when I was uh, an early teenager, me and a bunch of friends, we used to go into these sewer tunnels underneath the small town that I lived in called Fenland Falls. And uh, there's this one little cavernous area where we used to set up with candles and stuff and hang out. And, and we didn't play with pen and paper. We just played with our heads, you know, like uh, we didn't have dice or anything. But he was the, the one buddy of mine was like, oh, yeah, my brother plays this game with a bunch of his friends and it's really cool. And, and uh, you know, we just sat under and told stories about goblins and dwarves and elves. And, and uh, it was it was surreal. <laughs> The actual, uh, I can't remember, 1980s, 1990s movie starring Tom Hanks called Mazes and Monsters, where they dealt with that um, real life story suddenly of a kid, you know, disappearing, investigation, trying to find him, the sheriff walking into the dorm room and seeing tacks on a cork board that looked laid out like a map, giving the sheriff the idea to check the tunnels and, you know, parents freaking out back in the 80s late seventies, early eighties about kids, like, you know, demonic rituals and all this stuff going on. You have like this actual <laughs> real life experience. Um, but you know, you turned out okay. Oh right? yeah. I mean, oh yeah. Well, I mean, oh, trust oh. me, it wasn't demonic rituals by any means, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're fine. Yeah, you're it was fine. very, you know, Tolkien oriented adventures. I'll, that's what I'll say. Um, my next question for you is, um, why podcasting? I mean, not just because you're a friend of mine that I knew. I was I transferred high schools, and I was on my way out. You're on your way in because we're a couple of years apart, and I knew you're gamer into gaming and stuff. And we we cross back and forth paths. Um, and you actually at one point I was tr always trying to get Matt into like my game at the house. You know, yep. one of the instances or whatever. Uh, no, no, too busy, too busy, too busy. And then I mentioned Star Wars. Yeah, well, Star Wars. My son turned my, <laughs> my son turned fifteen, and we're like, we're just putting up a Star Wars group, and you're like really and poof he appears but that was still a couple of years ago that panned out after playing for two years in the basement and then i you know we got dis discussed podcasting and you and ryan messina who you introduced me to in that group friend of yours and has become a beloved cast member um i remember distinctly the coffee shop conversation where the three of us were sitting down and you guys were, you know, convincing me that I had the talent that we should do this. But, you know, it's on you, buddy. Bye. We're busy. <laughs> <laughs> we have no time for this. What changed your mind? What brought you around after I'd spent uh, six months to a year of auditioning strangers? Uh, luckily that I found Connor Bash, our technical advisor, and Nathan Reeton to, like, whisper podcasting secrets in my ear. What brought you back around to the idea of deciding to, like, sign on with us and, you know, despite my begging and ranting? Well, um, timing, for one, uh, it seemed to work out good for the most part. Um, that was a big por part of it. Like, I've always wanted to play. I've just never had the time. And uh, I got some free time. And uh, as far as the podcasting thing goes, I, you have a listen to what's out there. And you, and if you're a player, you always think, I'm sure we could do better than that. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, that you've probably heard me say that a couple of times. I got watching, um, you know, certain things, YouTube podcasts and going, oh, these guys are doing it. You know, why can't I do it? Um, but there's also podcasts out there that inspire, that inspire us. So I'm always talking about the Glass Cannon podcast. They are Paizo's official podcast. They are my personal favorite podcast. 
and I email one of their cast members, Skid Meyer, as often as I dare. They're probably sick of hearing from me by now. Oh, I'm your biggest Canadian fan, you know, blah, blah, blah. And soft plug of role mongers always thrown in there. Um, but I love these guys because they're five guys from New York, super nerds, and they just sat down and started playing for love of the game and did the podcast for funsies and then hit it big. They didn't come out of the gate going, boom, you know, that kind of thing. In the podcasting world, in the gaming world, whether it's YouTube content creation, you know, what is your favorite? What's uh, What do you watch? What do you listen to? Oh, wow. Um, well, I'm a, a pretty hardcore internet junkie. Um, spent a lot of time watching the good old college, college humor stuff. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but longtime fan of uh, Phil DeFranco. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty big rock star. But as far as like the D&D thing goes, uh, I saw the Vin Diesel thing, the D&D Diesel. Uh, oh, uh, yes, Matt Mercer. Yes, Matt Mercer. Critical Role. Yes. So I, I watched that uh, on the YouTube, and, and that was the one that, that kind of made me go, oh, wow, okay, yeah, we should probably do this because I'm sure we could do, you know, at least a comparable version. Well, perhaps in the future, we're only, even with this here, a very, 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 very faint dip in the toe of the pond of what is vodcasting and video. We have so much further to go. If when you see the credits roll, when they pull out and you see the studio and they're like in a warehouse, and they've got drapes and everything. Like you, th- they set it up to make it look like they're in someone's basement or someone's like gallery or whatever, but you see the amount of tech and, and, and budget they have. going. Oh into yeah. That. Um, but um, another thing that I usually ask podcast creators is, we have reached out to certain YouTube content creators and SoundCloud content creators and iTunes and stuff that actually have music. And we find out their music is, you know, copyright free. And we say, please, 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 can we use your music and we will hype you and, you know, hopefully help with our minute following. You actually are the front man, you and your father for the Harry Peterson band. Yes. That tours around the area and you are the lead singer of said band. I am. And you and I notoriously like break into song every other podcast because we love quoting movies. <laughs> Me love quoting and singing songs. You, the other guys politely smile and wait till we're done. Um, your vocal training, your, you know, being a singer or whatever is just being like talk show and the role playing and the voices and stuff you do with us and stuff. Is that just a natural, you know, you think someone that like does well, my singing music actually... seriously would not want to do more audio. My, st- my singing actually does stem more from the geek side of things. Like I was all, I've been doing voices and impressions and stuff like that. And, you know, just sound effects and stuff, things like that. And um, like, I, I never thought about even being a singer. One day I was working the night shift at Tim Hortons and I'm in the back singing along to the radio. And I always try to make, to try to sound like the artist uh, while I'm doing it. And uh, you know, I came out from the back and one of my coworkers was like, you should really, get into a band or something because because uh you know like you sound exactly like they do on the radio you know what i mean and and so it was that spark to somebody that believes in you and says hey are you doing i just this? never thought like, of oh, it it was just not something that ever yeah exactly i never it never crossed my mind and i mean like when i was a kid and they put me in like the core the choirs and stuff like that i would always totally choke up come performance time because uh because <laughs> uh, of nerves but I, I mean once once you get past that uh, it's it's probably my favorite thing in the world to do well if you'd like if you'd like to see or hear more of matt i mean he, he sings snippets for us and I'm, I'm just tickled pink when he does but the harry, Pe- harry peterson band has a facebook page you guys are on facebook yep. Um, might even have a YouTube it, channel too, if I if I recall correctly. There's a couple, oh, if you recall, oh, a couple of videos. I, like I, that. I do believe we've linked that to our official Rollmongers page. Oh, so if oh. you guys scroll down a bit, you'll fi- eventually find Matt and his band and some video and some for your listening pleasure. Uh, which brings us to our next question. Um, I enjoyed playing with you at the house, and that was why suddenly you've become Aiden and drop from the call. So we'll just ask Aiden this question. What? <laughs> <laughs> Something magical happened and everything shifted around. I don't know what you guys did, but something changed on my Oh, end. I think he just killed his video feed or oh, disconnected. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, at least on my end, the video feed stopped for a second, so or for a bit, so I hit stop video and then restarted it. Sorry. 
Oh, but okay. It fuck up anything. Yeah, you basically completely trashed the entire video because he disappeared and now you're in my magical window. So now <laughs> I have to interview you. I believe that's called the curse. You, Willems. No, no, no. Damn, you made of my Notice me, senpai. Notice me. Notice me, senpai. Just Aiden's face on your screen. Yeah. Now we're just gonna. Now we're gonna bring them both in here. No, we're crashing the party. We have Aiden Willems. Do you have any questions for Matt? You. Star cast Jedi, next person I was supposed to interview later. Uh, playing any video games recently? Any oh, good ones? You, you know it, you know it, buddy. Monster <laughs> Hunter World for the win, killing the oh. savage beasts in the jungles of the new continent. All right, I think we've solved our technical problem now. We have Matt back up, and we don't want to talk to him right now, anyway. So, Matt, yes, um, singing, uh, working having your private life and gaming Friday nights with us and recording, you know, the podcast. Uh, we've recently discovered the wonderful world of Zoom conferencing, though, as you can tell, both of us are trying to figure it out and have not mastered it yet. Much to, you know, probably the audience chagrin right now, wondering what the hell happened. <laughs> um, and one of our newest executive producers, because now not only time, but, you know, investing a little bit of money into the podcast helping us with subscriptions and everything and leading the party. Um, in case you haven't figured it out, Rahal Oberis, sleazy ex separatist noble working just after the war. Cause order 66, three months later, kind of ended the war, uh, starring in, we shot first our star Wars saga edition yeah. RPG podcast. Mr. Matt Witt here, um, leads the party unabashedly the man with the plan, right? <laughs> Uh, right hand man being Merrick Ryan Messina, um, small in stature, big in ego. There you go. I wanted to know: was there an initial inspiration for the character? If you had to cast him, if we made a movie and you had to, like, say, I want this actor, who would play? Oh God, uh, that's a tough one. I'd say uh, maybe Pesci, Joe Pesci, but not quite. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, Okay, 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 okay. They screw you in Star Wars, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, doing the bit. Well, he was much ruder in the back of the car in Lethal Weapon, but uh, yeah. Um, Joe Pesci, that interesting yeah, choice. Yeah, maybe, no, also, maybe there's, De Niro. There's the, like... the no, no, we can't afford De Niro. <laughs> <laughs> Both are like iconic gangster movies, you know, Pesci being the one little guy that lost his temper. Now, Rahal has never lost his temper. Um, but I wanted to know what was the inspiration for the character? I love the Brooklyn accent, how you've taken a real world accent and just decided that, you know, somewhere in the world of Star Wars, there's a, a human subhuman race or, you know, that type of thing where from this world they have this accent yep. and your people shine. Yeah. Um, inspiration, I, to be honest, it was just off the cuff. Um, I kind of uh, rolled the character out and, and, kind of built it after i was just like i know this fact this fact and this fact and then just that that was just the picture that my head rolled out it was this you know sleazy uh pseudo brooklyn gangster from the 20s <laughs> yeah, yeah it space. starts as a concept and then you build <laughs> as you go pardon me yeah um and uh at this point he's almost taken a life of his own <laughs> <laughs> well uh he's certainly a fan favorite he's one of my favorite characters and you're the one character that at the no spoilers actually i, I don't want to get into this because if you're new to the podcast and haven't listened um right out of the gate matt gets the first shot off which was a little bit of inspiration that we got um from one of our contributors uh that we shot first and he misses and he's been horrible <laughs> in combat ever since and taking wounds and has been the closest to near death if you get to the end of season one, um, if Rahal dies as a DM, I'm wondering what the party is going to do without you. Like we have, everyone else seems to be a support character. They're all awesome. They could be like lone wolf characters that can play on their own solo missions and might work with each other. But you seem to be the glue that binds um, 
would you try to jump in the shoes of another like lead character or would you, if you died or we sort of TPK, would you, you know, switch the back row and we'll just shuffle. That yeah. Out? I don't know. Um, that's a good question because you're right. It, it, if he was to go, there would be quite the, the void in the leadership role, but I, I'm not going to say that the other characters couldn't step up. I could see, uh, I could see poser taking a real assertive role in the future. Um, uh, his actions on, uh, on the, one of our last encounters spoke volumes. <laughs> yes, there was when when stuff was going to go down. He did seriously sort of break Poser character for character. Now there's some secrets about uh, Poser that are slowly coming to light, um, and I don't want to talk about those here. We'll possibly talk to him in his interview, though he's obviously nearby. <laughs> Never had anyone crash an interview before, uh, but the technical on that it's also kind of my fault. Um, kind of, almost. Um, but getting back to focusing on you, Matt, um, other RPGs. Now we're also lining you up to play war for the crown with us dice before dishonor. And we've asked Matt to take, um, a back seat because you are the lead and the star of this one. We're setting up a crew with a slightly adjustment to the cast, uh, with other leads focusing on Frank Hamilton, Jay Tamlin, that kind of thing, and asking um, Aiden to take a back seat, asking you to take a side seat, you know, maybe bringing Ryan in the forefront. Can you give us a sneak peek, a little bit of what to expect for the up and coming Dice for the um, Dice Before Dishonor podcast, which you plan on playing? Yes. His role in the party. Now, just to clarify, just so people know, um, without hyping too much because I've already mentioned them, there was a podcast that I was listening to and the listener mail was phoning and going, we have all this in my party and all this. And one of the hosts of the show went an all cavalier party. And I was listening to this going, yes, yes. We talked about that. We, Matt and I actually talked about like all knights or all paladins or the, the game Ashley used to talk about the three paladins, my three paladins, that kind of thing. And been something we've been playing around with and never got like permission to do or something <laughs> just to listen to this podcast to say, you know, I want to see this. This is something I want to do. I'm like, right. And then war for the crown come up and it looks very good. There's intrigue, there's political, there's politics it's set in Taldor, which is, you know, knights as well as the crown yep. is, you know, game of Thrones versus this type of thing. And we're like, we're going to play all Cavaliers out of the gate. And you guys have team feats and your Cavalier class and something that's suited. So Paladin Cavaliers, maybe a samurai, and a whole bunch of archetypes to make you guys seem different. And beyond that, if you must grow, if you must multi-class, or if you die and can bring in a completely other class, because we already know what your backup character is, out of the gate, what are we getting from that in his side? Scene, well, his back scene, um, this one, it, this is actually uh, a character that is completely inspired by uh, a movie from my childhood called Labyrinth. Um, Ooh, I know that movie. There's this little... Um, little uh terrier that rides around on a sheep dog and i can't remember his name <laughs> for the life of me sir didymus yes that's the He's one like, well, that's she the goes one. to the stink hole and sir didymus can't smell it and he guards the bridge yeah. with his little like clove tipped lance and he's riding <laughs> on a shepherd dog yeah and he's like the air is sweet and you shall not pass without my permission yeah so and do you remember how she gets by him no she's like can I have your permission? Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> right. the look on the guy. He's, he's, yes. he's, first of all, he's a Muppet. Like this <laughs> really goes right. to Jim Henson. You can't tell if the dog he's riding is real. We actually think the dog is real. He's obviously a Muppet on this dog. And the facial expressions where he's like, yes, like he's never been asked, you know, stands aside and off she goes. Like, that's almost as good as Python's like, what's your favorite color? Blue. Right. Off you go. Yeah. Um, so you take inspiration from this guy. From that character. And, and so, so so I'm gonna roll up a halfling. Okay. Uh named Sir Winston the Portly. <laughs> a round halfling. <laughs> a very rotund halfling. Uh, belonging to the order of the boar. Oh, cool. What do they what do they stand for? Uh they're protectors of nature and, and the Fae. Um Oh, man of the land. Yes. Very much don't, like, cavalier, but they don't do log. They don't allow logging and <laughs> things that would strip nature. That's cool. Yeah. And what does he ride? Um. Because you like your halfling, you need like a little tiny pony or something, don't you? Right. Uh. I was gonna put him on a war pig. A war boar. Yes. 
Oh, you mean like Jimmy Connolly in, in the last Hobbit movie where the dwarf comes riding forth on his huge war pig and he's got the, the tip Same kind of concept, him? but uh, yeah. Oh, right on. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, um, and, and, you know, typical um, over the top British chivalrous kind of, you know, like, Havati! Tut, tut! Cheerio! Here oh, yeah. we go! Righty! Eh? So- so you're going to be like the proverbial squire yes man to one of the other characters or just like we're all in this together and you know uh yeah precisely well it, you know he's 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 going to be um now this this sounds a very lot food like... focused so basically he's going to be rolling around constantly eating i i'm pretty <laughs> sure in, in in mail i'm going to be accused that because like i said my go-to podcast to listen to get inspiration from is the glass cannon podcast that are currently doing pathfinder's giant slayer and Inset Podcast, um, one of my favorite players, the real heart of this guy brings more heart to the game than the poor bastard wrote so many number ones, um, brought a cavalier, a halfling, and a wolf. So Willamit. And you almost did his voice that let's go, you know, and he's for the rose and the light. That kind of thing. Well, maybe I'll have to revisit that. I was not aware. Oh <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. You're for the that's a pretty honest face. I didn't put him up to that character. It's just, you know, I'm sure. Uh, though I don't think O'Brien has forgiven me. I kind of made up a parody order reflecting his bad roles and sent it to Skid Meyer. And Skid said he was cool with it, but I don't know. I don't think they're thinking this Canadian is that funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so assurances that your character concept is your own, that my influence in the podcasting world that I'm reaching out and listening to other ones has not influenced that choice. Nope. Brings us around to our next question for you sir um we have you starring in we shot first the star wars saga dawn of defiance campaign you are taking a supporting role in dice before dishonor and next we've been playing around with the sideshow that is having trouble getting out of the gate alignment undetermined podcast where we were going to do one shots very unusual we started with castle amber uh we're moving on currently we've we've dug up an old friend of ours uh josh doxon he used to play dwarven clerics and minotaurs and he's doing sort of like a, a one-off monster npc playing a minotaur in us trying to try trying to try trying to try pathfinders mythic rules so we have um mythic edition where <laughs> Things like things like that. Happen. That looks just like the game I've been playing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Monster Hunter. Yeah, things like that can possibly happen in your game. Um, I certainly hope and, not. <laughs> and again, you're playing a uh, subordinate. You're playing. Um, geez, I can't remember his name now. Mendez, Manuel. Manuel. Manuel, who has been charged to serve one of Frank's best characters. Yes, yeah, so take, taking a vow of silence and a and yeah, uh, he's serving old man Arif, Frank's uh, cloister. And a vow of servitude Aswell. to right. as penance for being a, an arrogant um, juice box. Yes, juice box. It's <laughs> a nice way of saying <laughs> something else. Um, yeah, and uh, he's he's pike wielding guy. You got the big glaive Garrison in there, yep. and he's uh, you know he's laying down the law type of thing. And you'll get to see a little bit of Matt. Um, now, are we? We've been pushing back the release date on that one. Um, so again, now we've you and I have cooked up something very very special with this sort of red shirts final destiny that we can't even touch to reveal. It's going to be good without get, without giving away stuff that's going to happen in Mythic. But I can say this. In the back of the Pathfinder Mythic Adventure book is a sample adventure called Black Craig Cove, and that's what we're running. And in it, they take seven level characters, bring them out, and as fate would have it, earlier on in the adventure, they have to lay you with mythic powers to get the job done. And they dump three out of the ten possible tiers. And these aren't levels. These are just like a big layer of power and then another big layer. And three level tiers. Decent stuff. On top of you guys going, here you go. Here's your magical power. And they're actually of all the different ways one can get mythical powers in games like Wrath of the Righteous and, and that whatnot, these are tied to items. And it pretty much is, here's your power ring. Yep. In brightest day, in darkest night, here's your rusted arrowhead, become the ranger of might, and off you go. And if you lose said item, you lose all your powers. And there's only so much to go around. And we decide with, you know, with your guy that might be not worthy 
a nice little side thing too much revealed already but what i can say about that one is we've put it in alignment undetermined the podcast because it's not your usual D D cup of tea it's not your usual you know, you're dealing with mythic powers it's got a really good jason the argonauts feel with it it takes place just off the top right corner of katapesh below the land of assyrian so that's below egypt but next to arabia and just off the coast on an island and it's got that pompeii volcano erupts save the poor village but we must run off and see the oracle into dinosaur land and do all these really big things and <laughs> i think we're really going to enjoy this one uh it's really over the top i put the cast together um asked jay to take a back seat and then we brought out josh and uh melted him <laughs> bronze statue releasing the thousand year old minotaur who may or may not be an ally and uh I can't believe how we took the same cast of guys that have so much chemistry from Star Wars and put them in an overpowered game and all you guys do is dick around. Like the, <laughs> the rudeness of the crass, rude jokes that come out of you guys. It's yeah. like holding back. It's, it's gotten bad. Um, yeah, it's going to make it tough for editing for you, I think. <laughs> now just leave it. No you slap an nc17 rating on it no one, oh, no one really uncle. listens to our main podcast it's true story, the, true story. The third fourth we're one famous right. in our own minds yes not our own time famous <laughs> in our own mind. um so i have one final question from matt wit we've covered your origin story what got you into it um we've covered the projects you're doing with us now and projects you're getting into. So like the future, you know, um, the current present, when we get our website up and running, we'll talk, you know, a little bit about yourself. Um, where about some, um, that transition from, you know, years of video gaming into playing with us and then podcasting with us and then like in the future or whatever, can we expect um, more from you? I, I believe this might have whetted your appetite for content creation that you might we might see um, you adding to our YouTube channel on your own, you adding to the SoundCloud, um, possibly a, dare I whisper it so early, possibly a second Star Wars podcast based completely in the Knights of the Old Republic era the old republic wow. era. we talked about we talked about a side shotgun podcast to these characters type of thing you know uh, what is uh what's on the plate for you specifically uh for me specifically well um we, we mentioned the projects that i'm working on with you um well, what about aiden since he's crashed already <laughs> what content can we expect from you and aiden? well um i'm i we were just talking um I just figured out how to record uh, gaming clips uh, while I pl and I've been playing this Monster Hunter World. So I was thinking that it might be super fun for him and I to get together and take down some of the biggins and, and record a couple videos to throw up there on the uh, uh, up there on, on, the, Twitch on the Twitch channel. And yeah, yeah so um, you can find us on Twitch, Rollmongers Raw. We don't know how long the videos stay up there, but I've dabbled a little bit and we've had marathons, Star Wars marathons over Christmas running on there and on Facebook and stuff. Because like I said, please be forgiving. We're really, really just kind of wetting our appetite. Um, one fine day, we hope to look as good as this smooth operator right here. <laughs> uh, I, I love that photo. Um, and yeah, that's my band the, doing the, the doing the Blues Brothers. This is why. <laughs> Awesome, awesome movie of my childhood, and uh, you know, never forgot it. Wow, it's um, a classic. Didn't know I was going to pull that on you, did you? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's taking it well. That's, uh, that's um, a great picture. I mean, <laughs> yes. Now, I've mentioned this. Uh, well, I'm hesitant to mention this, but we've also reached out and gotten in bed with some other YouTube creators, and we're trying to launch, dare I say it, because there is video proof of me mucking around on, on YouTube, Mummy's Mask. Oh my God. As a vodcast. You're going to have to call it the curse of the Mummy's Mask. Yes. Well, <laughs> quick history lesson that Rollmongers was supposed to just be, we're Rollmongers. And here's our podcast, The Mummy's Mask. And we never got it off the ground. Every technical issue, every casting issue. And then by the time we roped around to a solid cast and got you guys, you guys were all like, oh, we're, Rogue One was awesome. We're going to play Star Wars, right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, sure. 
I remember the rules, sort of. So now we have two resident rule lawyers. Well, three if you count yourself because you're helping me with them. And Jay Tamlin and Aiden Williams are looking everything up because they got so much on my plate. Um, it's a pretty good system. I mean, it's got its flaws. It's it's definitely in the whole min maxing department. It's got some some things that you can really buff yourself up with huge but it's also got some massive detriments that you can get piled on as well like it's it, it's a very extreme system sog edition it's playing with my new ears <laughs> um i just love my you new turn green your screen. head I just, slightly i can't i can't leave it alone just can't leave that green screen alone man <laughs> it's subject matter as i discuss oh. things they pop up it becomes relevant um toys so we um, we talked about using you in Mummy's Mask. Originally, you were part of the original cast, and then uh, you know personal life and work took you away from that. Now we're going to revisit it with an entirely different cast. None of my guys, not a single role monger, save myself, GMing it, will be in the new Mummy's Mask. It's all going to be RPG style youtube and soundcloud content creators and that's all i can say about it right now because it really is in pre-production we're really you know sounds like there's a cool whispers concept. of it whispers of it on on the internet you know we are pushing things forward but you know until i can get something on the air or until we can get into like you know the editing process i can't name names and i can't uh make promises but i will not give up <laughs> and if war for the crown tanks or something that i'm going to rope all you guys back into mummy's mask i count on seeing you there and um this has been gm jeff a delight to interview matt witt rahal obris of the star wars saga we shot first and my one of my social media advisors <laughs> twitch channel aficionado advisor and a close personal friend of mine, Mr. Matt Witt. Thank you so much for being on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Cue some dance music. Maybe. Dance. There's usually a <laughs> dance to something. We got nothing going. You know, there might be music here and, and something, but uh, not what we got going. Um, but thank you. And good night. And remember, SoundCloud, YouTube, Rollmonger's actual play podcast trying desperately on our own budget to bring you the enlightened entertainment of myself, my friends, some random Americans that we talked into joining us and let us know at rollmongers at gmail.com how we're doing so far, what you'd like to see in the future, comments, your videos, your own inspiration and how we could possibly make this guy a better actor and less of, you know, like a singing knob that just kind of shows up from my games. That would be great. Good to know. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs>